Then he said thoughtfully, Look, if me and Lenny work a month and don't spend nothing, we'll have a hundred bucks. That'd be four fifty. I bet we could swing her for that. Then you and Lenny could go get her started and I'd get a job and make up the rest. And you could sell eggs and stuff like that. They fell into a silence. They looked at one another amazed. This thing that they had never really believed in was coming true. George said reverently, Jesus Christ, I bet we could swing her. His eyes were full of wonder. I bet we could swing her, he repeated softly. Candy sat on the edge of his bunk. He scratched the stump of his wrist nervously. I got hurt four years ago, he said. They'll can me pretty soon. Just as soon as I can't swamp out no bunkhouses, they'll put me on the, co the country, the county. Maybe if I give you guys my money, you'll let me hoe in the garden even after I ain't no good at it. And I'll wash dishes and little chicken stuff like that. But I'll be on our own place, and I'll be let to work on our own place. He said miserably, You seen what they did to my dog tonight? They says he wasn't no good to himself, no nobody else. When they can me here, I wish somebody'd shoot me. But they won't do nothing like that. I won't have no place to go. And I can't get no more jobs. I'll have thirty dollars more coming time you guys is ready to quit. George stood up. We'll do her, he said. We'll fix up that little old place and we'll go live there. He sat down again. They all sat still, all bemused by the beauty of the thing. Each mind was popped into the future when this lovely thing should come about. George said wonderingly, Suppose there was a carnival or a circus come to town, or a ball game, or any damn thing. Old Candy nodded in appreciation of the idea. We'd just go to her, George said. We wouldn't ask nobody if we could. We'd just say, we'll go to her. And we would. Just milk the cow and sling some grain to the chickens and go to her. And put some grass to the rabbits, Lenny broke in. I wouldn't never forget to feed them. Uh, when are we going to do it, George? In one month. Right squawk in one month. Know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write to them old people that owns the place that will take it. And Candy will send a hundred dollars to bind her. Sure will, said Candy. They got a good stove there? Sure, got a nice stove, burns coal or wood. I'm going to take my pup, said Lenny. I bet by Christ he likes it there by Jesus. Voices were approaching from outside. George said quickly, don't tell nobody about it. Just us three and nobody else. They're liable to can us so we can't make no steak. Just go on like we was going to buck barley the rest of our lives. Then all of a sudden, someday, we'll go get our pay and scram out of here. Lenny and Candy nodded, and they were grinning with delight. Don't tell nobody, Lenny said to himself. Candy said, George. Huh? I ought to have shot that dog myself, George. I shouldn't ought to let no stranger shoot my dog. The door opened. Slim came in, followed by Curly and Carlson and Wit. Slim's hands were black with tar, and he was scowling. Curly hung close to his elbow. Curly said, Well, I didn't mean nothing, Slim. I just asked you. Slim said, Well, you've been asking me too often. I'm getting goddamn sick of it. If you can't look after your own goddamn wife, what do you expect me to do about it? You lay off of me. I'm just trying to tell you I didn't mean nothing, said Curly. I just thought you might have saw her. Why don't you tell her to stay the hell home where she belongs, says Car said Carlson. You let her hang around bunkhouses, and pretty soon you're going to have something on your hands, and you won't be able to do nothing about it. Curly whirled on Carlson. You keep out of this lest you want to step outside. Carlson laughed. <laughs> you goddamn punk, he said. You tried to throw a scare into Slim, and you couldn't make it stick. Slim throwed a scare into you. You're yellow as a frog belly. I don't care if you're, best the, you're the best welterweight in the country. You come for me, I'll kick your goddamn head off. Candy joined the attack with joy. Glove full of Vaseline, he said disgustedly. Curly glared at him. His eyes slipped on past and lighted on Lenny, and Lenny was still smiling with delight at the memory of the ranch. Curly stepped over to Lenny like a terrier. What the hell you laughing at? Lenny looked blankly at him. Huh? Then Curly's rage exploded. Come on, you big bastard. Get up on your feet. No big son of a bitch is going to laugh at me. I'll show you who's yellow. Lenny looked helplessly at George, and then he got up and tried to retreat. Curly was balanced and poised. He slashed at Lenny with his left and then smashed down his nose with a right. Lenny gave a cry of terror. Blood welled from his nose. 
George, he cried. Make him let me alone, George. He backed until he was against the wall, and Curly followed, slugging him in the face. Lenny's hands remained at his sides. He was too frightened to defend himself. George went out, was on his feet, yelling, Get him, Lenny! Don't let him do it! Lenny covered his face with huge paws and bleated with terror. He cried, Make him stop, George! And then Curly attacked his stomach and cut off his wind. Slim jumped up. That dirty little rat, he cried. I'll get him myself. George put out his hand and grabbed Slim. Wait a minute, he shouted. He cupped his hands around his mouth and yelled, Get him, Lenny! Lenny took his hands away from his face and looked about for George, and Curly slashed at his eyes. The big face was covered with blood. George yelled again, I said get him! Curly's fist was swinging when Lenny reached for it. The next minute, Curly was flopping like a fish on a line, and his closed fist was lost in Lenny's big hand. George ran down the room. Let go of him, Lenny! Let go! But Lenny watched in terror the flopping little man whom he held. Blood ran down Lenny's face. One of his eyes was cut and closed. George slapped him in the face again and again, but still Lenny held on to the closed fist. Curly was white and shrunken by now, and his struggling had become weak. He stood crying, his fist lost in Lenny's paw. George shouted over and over, Let go his hand, Lenny, let go! Slim, come help me while the guy got any hand left. Suddenly Lenny let go his hold. He crouched, cowering against the wall. You told me to, George, he said miserably. Curly sat down on the floor, looking in wonder at his crushed hand. Slim and Carlson bent over him. Then Slim straightened up and regarded Lenny with horror. We gotta get him to a doctor, he said. Looks to me like every bone in his hand is bust. I didn't want to, Lenny cried. I didn't want to hurt him. Slim said, Carlson, you get the candy wagon hitched up. We'll take him into Soledad and get him fixed up. Carlson hurried out. Slim turned to the whimpering Lenny. This ain't your fault, he said. This punk sure had it coming to him, but Jesus, he ain't got, ain't hardly got no hand left. Slim hurried out and in a moment returned with a tin cup of water. He held it to Curly's lips. George said, Slim, will we get canned now? We need the steak. Will Curly's old man can us now? Slim smiled wryly. He knelt down beside Curly. You got your senses in hand enough to listen, he asked. Curly nodded. Well, then listen, Slim went on. I think you got your hand caught in a machine. If you don't tell nobody what happened, we ain't going to. But you just try and tell to get this guy canned, and we'll tell everybody. And then will you get the laugh? I won't tell, said Curly. He avoided looking at Lenny. Buggy wheels sounded outside. Slim helped Curly up. Come on now, Carlson's going to take you to a doctor. He helped Curly out the door. The sound of wheels drew away. In a moment, Slim came back into the bunkhouse. He looked at Lenny, still crouched fearfully against the wall. Let's see your hands, he asked. Lenny stuck out his hands. Christ Almighty, I'd hate to have you mad at me, Slim said. George broke in. Lenny was just scared, he explained. He didn't know what to do. I told you nobody ought never to fight him. No, I guess it was Candy I told. Candy nodded solemnly. That's just what you done, he said. Right this morning when Curly first lit into your friend, he said, he better not fool with Lenny if he knows what's good for him. That's just what you said to me. George turned to Lenny. It ain't your fault, he said. You don't need to be scared no more. You done just what I told you. Maybe you go to better go in the washroom and clean up your face. You look like hell. Lenny smiled with his bruised mouth. I didn't want no trouble, he said. He walked toward the door, but just before he came to it, he turned back. George, what you want? I can still tend the rabbits, George. Sure, you ain't done nothing wrong. I didn't mean no harm, George. Well, get the hell out and wash your face.